All right, so we've come to our next topic in lecture 13, full of many interesting topics I might add. The pullback, um, specifically for uh, functions from one surface to another, all right? Um, now, pullback we can define for a smooth map. Um, I, as I mentioned, we don't really need anything particularly to be true about the map. We don't need, like, injectivity. We don't even need regularity. Um, I mean, you could define the pullback for the zero map if you wanted. It would be kind of boring. You'd just pull back everything to zero, so that wouldn't be too exciting. But here's the deal. If we're given a zero form, in other words, a function, um, or a one form, phi, or a two form, eta, we can use this pullback construction to define corresponding zero forms, one forms, and two forms on M. So we can pull back these differential forms to these differential forms. Start with talking about the function. The function is easiest to understand. A smooth function is just a mapping from n to r. So to construct a function from m to r, all we have to do is travel this path. So the pullback of g is just g composed with f. So start here, f goes over to here, g finishes it. All right, so that's the pullback of a zero form, which is just given to you by composition with the, the pullbacking map. Um, then for a one form, what you do is, is you follow this definition. Suppose phi is a one form on n, then the pullback of phi, f pullback phi, acting on a vector v, so we define a one form in terms of its action on vectors, is just given by the one form phi acting on the push forward, right, or the differential of f acting on v. Um, of course, the push forward takes a vector v over here, right? Um, so if, if my v is like here, so to speak, then um, over here we'd have push forward of v. Now, to be more pedantic, and if you'll actually try to prove specific things and so forth, you might you might want to be a little bit more detailed. Um, that's shorthand for this, f um, pullback phi, let's see, what point would this be at? This would be at the point do 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 p, right? Um, acting on v is equal to phi, actually at the point f of p, and then acting on the push forward, at P acting on V ay, 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 for all V in the tangent space to P at M. All right, so that's that's the, the, the man behind the curtain, if you will, here in terms of the point dependence. Obviously, writing all these P's is kind of a drag, and there's really only one meaningful way this can, can be constructed, so we just understand this is where the P's go. All right. Now, likewise, for a two-form, you also use the push-forward to basically convert vectors on M to vectors on N, and so that allows us to take the value of the two-form over here and give it to uh, a corresponding two-form, the pullback, F pullback eta over here. So F pullback eta on VW is eta of the push-forward of V and the push-forward of W for all tangents V and W to M. And that's how you do it. That's the pullback. Now, pullback and push forward are complementary um, notions. They're both very useful. Uh, pullback is much more forgiving than the push forward. You can push forward a vector field and maybe not get a vector field. You might end up, um, you know, you might end up with a map. If you don't have a, if you have a map which isn't injective, then you could hit a same point twice, and to that same point, you might attach two different vectors. And if you attach more than one vector to a point, well, goodness, it's not a vector field, is it? So, 14, wait a minute, oh yeah. So here's an example, um, and I use this term, and I, I actually claimed this as an example a while ago, now I'll work it out. And here's the example, which is that the pullback under the inverse to a patch X, all right, of the um, differential form DU, is equal to what I called du tilde earlier in this lecture. So let's work it out. So here, just to remind you guys, 
uh, here's my domain D, here's my surface, X goes this way, the chart goes that way, and we'll just think of it as a simple surface, let this be X of D, okay? And so what I'm saying is, is of course, DU, this is a V, this is U, so down here you've got DU and DV, that's their home, and uh, we define DU tilde and DV tilde up here as being, these are, these are dual, these were dual to the partial velocities XU and XV, but I claim that you can also understand them as being pullbacks of DU and DV. Um, it's, of course, not an accident that these are also dual to um, the Cartesian frame down here. All right, so um, there's probably some theorem to be proved there. Let's see here. Getting back to my example and stopping my, my jibber jabber. So if we do, let's look at x inverse pullback of du uh, on du, uh, and let's let that act on xu in particular, okay? then that by definition is du acting on the push forward right under the chart x inverse of of the partial velocity all right but i claim that that is du of u1 since now that that let me just that really is, there's, there's some technology we have not availed ourselves of yet, I suppose. To get from here to here, the way I see it, is this. We have already proved that x push forward of u1, where u1 is, the, is uh, down here, like u1, u2 are down here. You could think about that as partial partial u and partial partial v if you like. Um, so the push forward of u1 under, under the patch gives me the partial velocity xu, right? But we also know that x um, inverse composed with x, of course, is the identity map, right? And likewise, the push forward of x inverse composed with the push forward of x is the identity map, as it happens. Um, this is by the chain rule. Um, as, it, as it descends or ascends, whatever you want to think of it as, but the bottom line is then, knowing this, I can take from, um, you know, I can take take this lovely equation right here, and because of that, that gives me that u1 is equal to x push forward inverse, the, well, excuse me, the inverse of the stars out here, the push forward of the inverse map of xu which is what I used here, that this was just that. Now, of course, once I get to that, well, you, you should, as my daughter sometimes says, can't you recognize, let's see here, so partial u, partial u, because u1, of course, is just a partial derivative with respect to the first variable in the parameter space, and of course, that's one. All right, likewise, you can show that x inverse um, push, excuse me, pull back of du acting on xv is nothing more than partial u partial v, which of course is zero. And so, lo and behold, we've got what we want, which is that the inverse um, pull back on du inverse pullback du is nothing more than du tilde because these two equations define du tilde, right? Extended linearly and we, and we can. So, I wasn't lying to you. In fact, it is the pullback. All right. So that said, there are of course some nice properties. Some nice properties for the pullback. And, uh, so here are the most important ones to know. Pullback of, um, let me say, alpha plus beta is equal to the pullback of alpha plus the pullback of beta. The pullback of alpha wedge beta 
is equal to the pullback of alpha wedged with the pullback of beta. So the pullback respects addition, it respects the wedge product, and it also, this is more surprising, respects exterior derivative. In other words, you can exterior differentiate alpha and then pull it back, or you can first pull back alpha, then exterior differentiate, and you get the same result. And that is interesting for a variety of reasons, in fact. So these, these three um, properties make the pullback a great asset as you're trying to build calculus on one space and 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 steal it from another. Um, we use these these ideas about pullback and transferring calculus from one place to another with great success in the theory of exterior differential systems. But that's for another course. Anyway, um, so let's see here. The proof of one and two are easy. The proof of the, oh this is one, two, and three. Can't count. Okay. Proof of three um, is given in O'Neill for a for a two form. I'm going to show you the proof of three for the case of a one form. Actually, the two form proof is a little bit technical, and uh, so I don't know I, if I'm going to put that much effort into it. I'd rather do it in a more general context than our current one. So, because oh, by the way, this is these things we're talking about are not specific to surfaces. All of these things we can we can abstract to a much more general context. But anyway, um, the pullback. So let's let's let uh, let alpha be a one form. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Let alpha be a zero form. Tell you what. Let's <laughs> let g be a zero form. All right. So we're going to pull back under f of dg. All right. So I want to figure out: Can we show that that is equal to d of the pullback? Um, of, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Oh, my paper! What is happening? What is happening? Get my magnets. All right. So, in order to understand how one forms behave, you let them eat vectors and see what happens. So we'll, we'll pick our favorite vector, the partial velocity x u. Now, that by definition is dg, right, acting on the push forward under f of xu. All right, um, but by um, the chain rule, that is d of g composed with f. I, I, I tell you, I, I like the way this looks even better if I use the notation f is df I, that then you have dg of df and so like the, you know you have this dg composed of df is equal to d of g composed of f that is in fact the chain rule for push forwards um, which we could also call the differential all right anyway so there you go but what is that well that is oh but what is the composite g composed of f well that's the pullback so that's d of f pullback g acting on x u. But you see, I said x u, but I, I really could have just scratched x u out and put an arbitrary vector there, right? And you see that thus, um, oh, I knew that. I don't know why I have made my, my proof not as pretty as it could have been. Oh, well. Oh, no. My audience will know I have flaws. Ha! Ah. Okay, if they're awake, they know. All right, so there you go. There's the proof of three in the case of alpha being a zero form. The proof for one form differentiating to a two form is an O'Neill. Now, that brings us to our final section for this lecture, and I'm going to try to keep it um, really short here because I don't really have much to add. Uh, so I'm going to use my, my scratch notes here. Oop. There we go. Do, 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 do. Because um, the careful arguments in this section I've already made in calculus three, multivariate calculus. And so, you know, what's new here is he's giving you formal calculus on surfaces. So he defines integral of a one form um, basically by pulling back 
the one form along a curve to one form on the on the interval, and then so he has this definition. That's basically the definition of a line integral. And of course, you get the fundamental theorem of calculus in this in this format, being the integral of df is f of q minus f of p, where alpha is the curve from from p to q. Now, the, the most interesting part of section, what is it, section, da, 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 I, oh, I've lost my book, oh, well, goodness gracious, what section was this? It's either 4.5 or 4.6, I can't remember. Anyway, this introduction of this notion of two-segment is interesting, because a two-segment, unlike the D for the domain of the patches, the two-segment is closed, it's got, it doesn't have fuzzy edges, it's got edges we do stuff with. So it's got these four curves. Now, you notice that the, the if you want to think about these curves as being the boundary, they're not quite the usually orientation. You notice that the horizontal curves both go left to right, and the vertical curves go down to up. And that if you've done calculations in Calc 3, that's a really nice way of thinking of things, because integrals done in the order of coordinates work out better. I don't know, there's just some kind of uh, psychological barrier we have to not making sign errors with right left or right left or down or uh, up down oriented horizontal and vertical curves i know from experience myself anyway so with respect to one of these so-called two segments we can define an integral of a two form basically by just taking the two form on the surface um, over this two segment which is you know some kind of just to give you a picture uh, so there's my m and eh, here's a two segment. It can be curvy, um, depends on the patch, I suppose. But down here, it pulls back to a stone cold rectangle that goes from, say, A to B and C to D, like that. And so, again, the difference being between just being like a rectangular domain for the patch that had to be an open rectangle. This is definitely a closed rectangle. And we need to find a double integral basically over this, you know, I don't think I had a name for it. This, I guess if you wanted a name for it, it'd be x inverse of, oh goodness gracious, that he calls x the two segment. I don't even, I don't have a name for it. I, I'll call it Pac-Man, okay. Pac-Man, this is the rectangle in the plane. Um, so this this you know integrate this down here which you know here's the details. You take the the, the, the two form, evaluate your partial velocities, and do this iterated integral over u and v. Um, oh, as in the order I have it listed though, that should be dv du. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, and then you get uh, the Stokes theorem, which says that the integral over the differential on the two segment is equal to the integral of the of the form on the boundary. Uh, and then he also talks about how you have oriented and the other oriented integrals, of course, like the line integral. If you change the direction of the curve, you get a minus. And um, so we need to know about that sign switching in order to derive um, a few things in the section which follows, where he does some interesting things with two segments as they relate to compactness and other topological notions, but anyway, sorry to gloss over this section a little bit, but I would refer you to my multivariate calculus where I have already done these things carefully in a different notation. Thanks, and that will draw this to an end after about an hour more of editing on my part.